welcome to Meditech Day One. I'm Jess. I'm going to be your teacher for the day. So everybody's heard of Meditech. You know, we've talked about it in some nurses' meetings and stuff. And now it's time to start training, and um, it's kind of an exciting time. The things we're going to go over today is how to log in, um, how to view the status board, and what the status board is. It's um, an integrated desktop that launches you into several different nursing routines from there. And then also, um, we're going to talk about the plan of care and how we as nurses always function off of a plan of care anyway. And so this would be how to incorporate that with Meditech and how the plan of care affects what we see on our desktop when we're working. So who has heard of a screenshot before? Have you guys, have you done a screenshot before? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Oh, perfect. So when you do the screenshot, how do you usually go about doing it? There's a button on the keyboard that says print screen. Print screen. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then it sa save it to the clipboard on your computer, so you can kind of just paste it wherever you want is how I've normally done it. Uh-huh. Carrie, have you done that? I have heard done that, but I've heard about it. Okay. You've heard about it, though? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and sometimes, like, this keyboard, it just it says it's a well, I passed out a little piece of paper to everybody to put in their binder, and it's called Making Screenshots. And the reason that we make screenshots for Meditech is because sometimes you get an error message. When you go in about your day even in Health Lens, you sometimes get like a little pop-up screen or like a little error message, and you usually maybe click OK or X out of it and go about your day, right? Just it's kind of in your way. And sometimes in Meditech, those error messages have a bug associated to it, kind of like a computer bug, and when you click OK, it shuts down your whole desktop, and anything that was unsaved, you're going to lose it. So we're working those bugs out now while we're testing everything out, and so then by live, hopefully we have all of those error messages addressed. So if you would, if you know how to make a screenshot, you can help us to troubleshoot those bugs, because maybe you'll get a message that we don't. You know, everybody might have some different error messages. And so if you take a screenshot of that and email it to us, then we can help to troubleshoot that. So it becomes a partnership in making it a nice system when we're ready for live. So to make a screenshot, my screen here, all I would have to do is find the print screen on my keyboard. And there's a button right up here on your keyboard that says print screen. Can everybody find it? Okay. You all have one? So when I hit print screen and then I open up you know, I can open up like a Word document or a paint tool. And what I paste in here is what I had exactly showing on my computer screen at the moment. And all I have to do is paste it into like a Word document or paste it into a new email that you're going to send to like Mike or me about this error message. And that will help us troubleshoot it and then just mail it off. Any questions about screenshots? Like when it's time to do it? Do you guys want to practice making one real quick? Give it a shot. So whatever your session is now on your computer screen, go ahead and hit the print screen button on your keyboard. And then either open up your email or open up a Word document. All I had was paint. I didn't have Word on my screen. You could do either. I just prefer an email. You guys, Logan, you got it? You guys had this exercise last week, so. I didn't do it. All right. Glad to hear. There it is. Um, we don't need to save it. No, we don't need to. So this will capture anything on your screen. And if you put it in a blank email, it'll email it. So it's just a nice way to be able to capture it. There is a way in Meditech to take a screenshot. But sometimes when you click away from that error message on the Meditech's click button for print screen, it still closes your desktop, so really the foolproof way is to use the keyboard and hit print screen and then paste it. And you can easily capture it that way. 
So everyone on their desktop has this green circle that says MT for Meditech, and then it should say test. You probably have two icons like that. One says test, one says live. Right? Okay. We're not going to use the live one, no way, no how, until June. It's kind of um, like a blank slate. Meditech computer programmers need to fix it up for us, and if we're in there playing around, we're messing up what they're going to be programming. So don't go into that. Just go into test and go ahead and click on it. I think I have to double click mine. We should get this screen. Is everybody there? Did it come up for you? Okay. So we are now in packet one. Your first tip. And packet one of your binder has a four page outline in the front. Go ahead and take that out and you can use that for note taking or just to follow along. You got to end? Well, it's defaulted to Janelle and it won't let her team. Oh, no, you'll have to be in there as Janelle. If you go in as yourself, you don't have it. Oh, yeah, you don't have the desktop. Okay. So then I'm going to have you click here and we're going to go through this whole process next. Yep. yep. And we'll and just stop there. I got an error message too, but I think he's helping me. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably move It says I'm not defined in the universe. Oh, well, you're <laughs> in our universe. Oh. Sorry, I don't Don't feel bad. Here's a little band-aid. We think you're I will take that. <laughs> Got my candy patsy. Don't worry, I'm coming. You're coming all the year, buddy. So go ahead and take out your outline. There's four pages in the first section of your binder. Just a second. Mm -hmm. And then after you're going to shut the binder after that. And then after that you have a um, article called the function keys. Everybody has that page? Okay. I just ask because I want to make sure everybody's got all the pages of the binder. We had quite the printing oh, press yeah. running. <laughs> so just making sure the copy machine didn't skip a page because it was running in hot for a long time. So at the top of your outline, there's it's a notation that we have Meditech's function keys handout. Are you guys more of a mouse person or kind of like a keyboard person? Are you a clicker or do you like shortcut keystrokes on your keyboard? Clicker. Clicker. I'm a clicker. You're either way. If you are a clicker, you're in business because I'm a clicker and that's how I teach. <laughs> if you're a keyboard strokes person, learn to click first and then review this document on the shortcuts on the keyboard. And this is nice for clickers too because there are a few things that are handy. We're not going to go over it. This is just some extra information for you, but it's at the front of the binder, so you always know there are some shortcuts in the system. I think it's um, three or four pages. And then there's a screenshot in your binder that you'll come to next. And what it looks like is this. And that's the screen that I have up on the overhead right now. Right? Everybody's there? Okay. And it says Audrey Huff. <laughs> <laughs> so once you're to this screen, notice that this HCIS usually pops up green for you. Or if you click on it, it turns green. In Meditech, green is meant to draw your attention to it. And so what you're doing, sorry, I'm sitting with my back to you, is green usually means unsaved data or it catches your attention because it wants you to put something in that box, okay? So on HCIS, you have two options. You have HWC test and Z convert. <coughs> Don't go into Z conversion. That's the computer programmers in Massachusetts. You go in there and we mess up their code. We mess up the whole system. <laughs> And I don't even know if you'll have access to go in there, but don't even click on it. I don't ever click on it. Always click on HWC test until we're live. Then you'll have a different one. It'll say live. Most of you don't have two jobs listed. On Carrie's screen you do because you're in as Janelle. And so, Carrie, you're going to want this same job that says core team on it. Do you have that? Okay, I clicked on the green. The test one it says welcome to HC. Yeah. Okay. It just wants to step to ahead. You. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Most of you will launch and you'll have that message come up. 
Now this isn't the kind of error message that we're going to screenshot and send, right? It's just kind of a notification, okay? So then every time you log into the test string, you'll get this message. And until you hit close, it won't go any further. In live, you won't have this message. You'll log in, it'll open up that whole desktop. This is just a warning message that says, when we are live, hey, you're in test, don't chart on anybody in here because it's not the legal record, right? So we have a little warning set up. Just hit close and it's gonna bring you to your main menu screen, right? Everybody has that? Okay, go ahead and turn the page on your binder. This just describes some of the things that you see on the screen right now. And the top of the page says the main menu topic, right? Okay. okay. So the very header bar of your Meditech screen, once you're open in your session, will always have your name. If you sit down to a computer and it says Janelle's name, you know you're not in the right place, usually. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that would be where me for today, check. Carrie. For oh. today. <laughs> yep. Current date and time. Your facility is always going to say A because that just means the main hospital. And your HIM department. Some of you might have it, some of you won't. Mike says it's just a blank and you don't really need it. We all go under the same HIM department anyway. And you'll notice in the Meditech screen, it's very much Windows based. So you have your usual window buttons in the upper right hand corner. Minimize. Everybody knows what that does, right? You know how to get your screen back up if you minimize? Those tiles at the bottom. Can everybody see the bottom of my screen here? Where it just says the green Meditech? When I hover on that with my mouse, I can see all the Meditech windows that I have open. When I click on it, it just brings it right back up. I can maximize my screen and just make it fill up the whole computer screen, which is nice. Usually on your desktop at work, you're gonna wanna maximize your screen because there's some things in here um, when we get into the status board that will or will not show, so we'll revisit that again. And I bet you all know what the red X does, right? Closes it up, so don't hit that. <laughs> the buttons on the right are called body buttons. On page one of your outline, this is letter C, and I've listed out these body buttons for you. Basically, when you come into this screen, you're just gonna click on this clinical menu, and you're gonna go into status board, and that means you're working on the floor. If you need to work on a patient in the ER, then you need to click on the ER tracker, which we'll train on another day. Or are they just out of order? Yeah. Go ahead and put your eyes up on my screen here. No. When you expand these menus, they'll go a long way. And I can expand on any menu that has a carrot button on it that little black arrow. But once I'm to something that doesn't have a carrot button, then it's actually opening up a job that I want to do from this menu. Now, how do I get back over to the main menu? Well, I can just click on it and it'll take me back. Or if I was all the way out here again, I can just hit back. Or if I wanted to just go all the way back instead of just one bar at a time, I can hit home. And I have a lot more menus on my screen than most of you do right now, except you have pretty much the same ones I do, and what you see on Patsy's screen is the same as mine. That's because you have a lot of those building menus that are in the background. You don't want anything to do with those, neither do we. <laughs> you can have them. Yeah, you can have them. <laughs> you want them. You can click on frequent, and what this does is it brings up like my top 20 or 15, however many is on there, of what I frequently use in here. So then if you click home again, it'll bring you right back. There's footer buttons. So these are called body buttons. These are the windows buttons. These are the footer buttons. The footer buttons are different in every screen in Meditech. So are the body buttons different in every screen in Meditech. When you click on subdivisions, if we were like a Catholic Health Initiatives hospital that has multiple hospitals in even different states, we would have an opportunity here to pick which facility and HIM department and time zone we were in. And we're always gonna be the same, so we really don't have a reason to go in there. And in fact, if you try and change it, it won't even really let you change it. The next buttons that you see on your screen are in the bottom right-hand corner, and there's five little links there, and those are called the external links buttons, and that's on the bottom of page one letter E on your outline. Go ahead and turn the page 
in your binder. That next page just shows the main menu, home screen. Turn the page again, and that shows that you, sh you should click on clinical, and usually you'll go right into status board, and you see how those are kind of low lit on the menu screenshot. And we talked about the body buttons and the footer buttons and how they change on every screen. These external links buttons never change. In every screen in Meditech, they're always the same buttons. Guess what the question mark does? It's the help button. It's nice. So when you click on the question mark, go ahead and click with me. It's going to bring this screen up. Does that screen look familiar? That was page, well, four. It was the first page after that function keys hand out in your binder. So that's a screenshot of what the help description is for your menu screen. Every screen that you're in in Meditech, when you click the help button, it'll bring up the current screen and describe what you see in front of you and what it can do. These help screens are interactive, so like if I click on the frequent button on that help screen, it brings up more help for the frequent button. And the bottom, I can go prior topic in the footer button, next topic, more information, or back. Sometimes the more information isn't really that much more. It's like, click on it if you want it to work. That's the more information, but there is some really good useful things in here. If you forget what the subdivisions does, it'll tell you if you click on it. You can X out of the help screen, and you should be back to your main menu, right? The next external links button is kind of like a globe. Everybody has that? Go ahead and click on it. What comes up is a link to Google. Go ahead and click on Google. Looks pretty familiar, right? So you don't have to minimize your Meditech session in order to access the internet. You can just go to that external links and it's just right there at your fingertips. If you wanted to minimize your screen and then find your internet icon and do it that way, you can still do it that way, okay? The next one is Lip and Cot Nursing Procedures. Go ahead and click on it. Everybody should be launched into a screen like this. This is something that our facility has purchased for um, nursing staff to have information kind of at their fingertips. So if you want to have a refresher on pericare or on inserting a catheter, then you can click on here and there might be some information about what the best practices are and the current knowledge base on that. Um, there's also some nice teaching guides for providing patient education if you're, the, if you're the patient's primary nurse for the day. Go ahead and X out of that. The next one is mail. Go ahead and click on mail. Does everybody get a screen like this? Okay. That's just the web version of what happens when you open up your mail, your work email on your regular desktop. So you would just log in with your usual name and password, like you would log into your regular desktop. It's the same for this. Go ahead and X out of the email. And go ahead and hit the close button at the bottom right corner. And you're back here. Right? There's the next icon, number three. It's a printer. When you click print, this is actually a print screen for the Meditech world. So this is like their print screen button. This is not foolproof. If I had an error message on here and I clicked off of the error message on a print screen, some of those error messages make my desktop drop all the way. I gotta log all the way back in again. So this is where you would really use the keyboard instead. But it's kind of nice sometimes. If it's not an error message and you just want to do a screenshot, you can use that printer button. And when I come into the printer button, it launches me into preview automatically. All I gotta do is hit OK. And I have this little report down here report bubble. This is the little print preview of my screenshot. When I click on the print button, it doesn't automatically send it to a printer. Like right now, in your desktops, you hit print and boom, it goes right to the nursing floors printer, right? This one, you actually pick a printer by clicking on here. And there's um, some different printers that you can choose from. So don't be afraid to hit the print button. On these. Everybody see that? We're going to X out. Oh, where you wanted it to add print on. Go ahead and X out of your print preview. 
if you are in, I'm just going to demo this real quick, but if you are in on a patient assessment and you hit print screen and you think that what's going to happen is that it's going to print the whole assessment, it won't. It will only print what fits on your current view on your screen. It won't print out every question on there. So like if I'm in here, and we'll teach you all this later, see how I have only so much that fits on my screen? If I do a print screen from here, the report that comes up is going to stop at number of voids. It's not going to include the stuff on the bottom, okay? Because that's how a screenshot will work. It's not going to print the whole thing for you. So just a warning on that. It took me a little bit to figure it out, so I thought I'd let you know. The next external links button on your main menu home screen is a padlock. Go ahead and click on it. What happened to your desktop? Anyone? Went away? Do you know where you can find it again? It's in the footer, right? It's that tile on your Windows screen. All you got to do is click on it to bring it up again. <laughs> it took Janelle's password out. And, <laughs> yep, it took Janelle's password out. Yes, it on. So, oh, it did? Oh, good. Boy, that is, that's, this is the longest it's ever taken. Nine o'clock, almost. It's it's quarter till. Janelle will have to lock her back in. <laughs> You're still connected. You're still connected. Unless I can get on it. Yeah, maybe you'll be able to get on it. Can I try that one? No. No, it's still sucks. We'll take a break after we get through the external links buttons, and then we'll see if we can get logged on and maybe troubleshoot the computers. That way you'll have your own logon session. When you expanded your screen, did you get the suspended session message? Okay, and then you type in your password and hit enter, and it brings you right back to the screen you were on when you locked it. Okay? What happens in Meditech is if you are away from your computer for 30 minutes and there's no activity, it automatically locks your screen. All you have to do is look at the footer tile in your windows, open up your Meditech window, and put your password in, and you wouldn't have lost any data. But after 60 minutes of no activity, then you lose any unsafe data. So 30 minutes, it's auto lock. 60 minutes, if you're not back, it's gone. Now, if you hit your lock button, that's like, oh, I'm going to run to the bathroom. I need to lock my screen. It's, you know, HIPAA stuff or whatever. Lock your screen, come back, log right back in. But if you leave it locked for 60 minutes and you're not back, then it loses unsafe data that way too. Um, the next button is this little piece of mail. When you click on it, it should launch you into your email. So it's just handy that you don't have to go into that web links. You can go into the actual email. And it, on this, on Janelle's, it actually kicks her back into her email. It, it opens does it automatically. Yeah. Go ahead and close out. Don't read Janelle. <laughs> <laughs> I Janelle does I don't even want to. <laughs> yeah. She trusts Janelle doesn't even want to read her email. <laughs> Screen. We've talked about all of the header bar, the windows buttons. What are these buttons called? Body buttons. Body buttons. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And what's this subdivisions okay. where that one is in there? What's that button called? Footer button. Who said that? Me, but you want some candy? No. <laughs> I tried to feed her candy last night. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a teenager, I would want to feed her candy. I would. <laughs> Try back on this one, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
or this one in the front. No, just door. Yeah, one up front. If one works, usually you can log out. It'll let you on another one. It's just. <laughs> I can't log out, so I'm stuck. <laughs> you can't do it. Anything. It, but okay. Can you escape out of that? Will I try you? control all every day. Just, um, yeah, just power off, power on. Did you pause that it? camera? Just okay. unplugged it and everything, and it came right back. Do you want to try? Do you want me to try to put you on that one up front, Kathy? Yes. <laughs> no. It's in. No, no. Not yet. no. This one is mine. Okay. I want you to turn on. Yeah. Let me have that spam. Okay. <laughs> we'll just let it go. Well, I guess it looks like our login IDs aren't working, so we're just going to keep going with <laughs> what we started. Yeah, curious. Glad you're on. <laughs> I'm getting so on the curious. Getting oh, you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So Kathy just needs to get in. Come on, Kathy. Yeah, come on. It just, yeah. I should just go home. Maybe that's you know. a sign, Kathy. <laughs> no. it, I should go home, right? <laughs> well, I can't get out of that one, so you can just use it. Yeah, yeah. it's something. only, I mean, it's only, what, a couple more hours. Once Carrie's logged in, you could try and log out and see if, see if you can log into this one, if those two are locked. Oh, she's already into this one. And we, okay. we're both like super users, so we've just kind of been through some of this before. Okay. So it'll be all right. It's all right? You're comfortable? She, she, can, she okay. can do nothing to this computer that I have not already done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not a <laughs> user in the universe. Well, I'm really glad that Carrie's got her own desktop. That's great. Patsy, do you want to jump over here? Or come over here? Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Carrie's not a user in the university. Not, not in the universe. Yourself. Oh, well, come on back to Janelle's screen. <laughs> I'm glad, though, that you had the opportunity to find that out. Otherwise, we wouldn't know to fix it for you. So. Yeah, that's great. Michael, mm -hmm. fix that up. We'll have you try it again later. Okay. Yeah, let me in that one. Yeah? I think it's the computer. All right. So we finished page one of our outline. Page two of your outline says, in bold at the top, PCS status board body buttons and routines. So in your binder, we are clicking past here, and now we're on a page that looks like this, and it says a typical patient care status board. You all have that? Okay. So this is what it looks like if when you're on the status board and you click the help button. That's the page that you get. And so all those little bubble boxes are telling you what some of the icons on that desktop do. So it's kind of a nice little point of reference. On your screens right now, I want you to click on the clinical menu and then launch yourself into the PCS status board. This is what your desktop will look like when you come to work and you launch into your work routine. This is the nursing desktop, okay? And yours probably says my list or my patients at the top. Whether we say my list or my patients, it's the same thing. For some reason, some people says list and some people says patients. It's kind of weird, but it's all the same. However, yours does not look like mine right now. Yours looks more like this right now. Whoop. Right? Except for Janelle's. Yeah, I was say mine doesn't. You have yeah, patients that I on that there. Janelle's is, is Janelle test and Patty test and Amber test. And Can I? Clear your screen. Yo, I can do it. You want to do it? Okay, go. Yeah. We're going to get everybody doing it. Mine doesn't need to be clear. It's just this thing we're doing. That's fine. You want everybody on? Yeah. Without so patients on our dogs, what it looks like. patient, then you can see that there's information in all of these categories. So we're going to go through the routine of how do you get a patient onto your screen in the first place. But before we do that, we're going to talk about some of the functions that you see on your screen without a patient on there, okay? You notice that the body button's changed. You notice that the footers button's changed. But notice that those external links buttons are still the same. 
go ahead and turn the page in your binder. This is a screenshot of what the status board looks like when there are patients listed in your list. There's a main status board box, and then there's a smaller details box, which is right down here. So this is the main columns and this is the details. We're gonna go ahead and go through the body buttons. I know I'm on my screen still because in the header it says my name. So I know I'm okay to start clicking around in here. Unless you're Janelle for the day. Okay. <laughs> or Audrey. <laughs> you're Audrey for the day. I'm gonna have you click on the first button that says lists. Go ahead and turn your page in your binder and you have a paper that says selecting patient lists, status board topic. <clears throat> Everyone should have these lists listed for you. Does anyone not? Okay, that's good. Click on this list. Right, right here. here. Did it, did it go? There, there, there it is. Go. Okay. Did it go? Not it's very picky about where you put the pointer. It must be. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Click on list. So you have the any location, my patients, find account and recently accessed, but yours might not necessarily be in that order on your screen. The first one we're gonna go into is find account. When you click into this list, this is how you can look up a patient's medical information. And so say you have an ER coming in and the nurse said, hey, can you pull up that patient's past medical history and allergies for me? I'm gonna wanna be on my toes when they get here. So you could come in here and you could Search by name, if you happen to know the name, and then you can find everybody, at least with those initials even, but if you kind of know who you're looking for. So when you type in the search fields, you can put in the whole name, comma, no space, and then you can put in the last, or the first name, excuse me, so last name, comma, first name, no space. When you hit search, it'll pull up all of the visits that this patient has had recently. And then I can click on which one I want to see. And it shows you the name and the birthday, so you can verify, yeah, I think that's who we want to look at, and the date of the visit number. So you can see which is the most current, and you also see that the most current comes to the top. And what the location of this visit was for. So this guy was on the med surge nursing floor at this visit. He was in the OR at another visit, right? Medical record number, always the same, just like it is now. Once I highlight the visit that I wanna see, I can click on it on my screen and I can select the patient. And that's how I get them onto that find account list. From here, I can click in the chart box here, the blank area, and it'll open up the chart and I can view the medical history through these panels for that visit, these body buttons, okay? We'll go into that routine in another training session, but I just wanted you to know that that was what the find account list does. That's how you can do like a patient inquiry or an account query. Go ahead and click on lists and then click on find account again. And I'm gonna have you type in N comma and your first initial. Hit enter. See how when you hit enter, the green box goes to the next field? And you can kind of enter through all of these. Not too many people are gonna know their social or what their medical record number is, so it's very difficult to search for patients that are calling in that way. But if you have a patient that's currently on the ER or has already been admitted and you just wanna find more information, you would know those numbers. Really though, the name field is the best way. Click search, it's in the footer buttons. And what comes up? Do you see your name? Nurse Carrie. Nurse Carrie, okay. <laughs> so that's how you It's can... not me. <laughs> it's Carrie John. <laughs> the birthday's wrong. Oh, really? I don't think you don't... the birthday's are correct on Yeah, Molly was 98 years old. Yeah, the super just, user, yeah. so. <laughs> Does it say Carrie, Carrie Jane, Jane, Carrie H? It just says Nurse Carrie. Okay, that's you. Oh, there, Nurse Carrie H. And Nurse Carrie H is not available. Oh. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, the birthdays are long. They didn't know. So this is how you can find an account, okay? 
From here, we're just going to click back on the lists. And one of the next things we'll go through is this Any Location. Go ahead and click on Any Location, and you should get a nice big long list of different locations in our hospital. Does everybody have that? Is anyone limited to only five or six things on their list? Okay. Click on the Health Center. Oh, there. There, you got it. So you can sort this list alphabetically by clicking this location, name, the, the banner at the top, and then you can also sort them reverse, and it just makes it easier to find stuff because it doesn't always default alphabetically onto your screen. Go ahead and find the med search location and click on it. Did you all get this screen? Okay. So when you're on the med search location, what it's doing is it's telling you that this is the list of patients that are currently in the med search location. When you scroll down, you have a scroll bar here. It moves you so that you see these main columns on the status board, and then you also see the detail column on the status board, right? It looks very familiar, doesn't it? Kind of like the my list. You know that it's not my list or my patients because the header says location med search, all right? Even though it looks very much the same. She just got the small. She doesn't you. have a full status board. Yeah, me either. You just Not have even up to name and age. Yeah. Name and age. Okay. Yep. Okay. Name, birthday, and sex. Good. That's what we want. That's what it's supposed to be for now. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. All right. Those are all the other. Yep. Perfect. So you just stuff. have that name, mm -hmm. age, and sex. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. So it just shows you kind of the minimum information of who's in the hospital in that location. Okay. It doesn't even give a room. Yours looks like that. <laughs> yeah. Logan Belvey. It, it doesn't room. give a room. No. Oh, you would yeah. We got a box there, that. so that needs to be. Yeah. Be Logan can view the whole desktop, though. Okay. We'll get that changed. I was playing with the status board, and I didn't realize that I switched it. This, those of you that don't have the same as me, that's like the HIPAA status board, that it just gives the name and birthday. So it, we were demonstrating how that changes. It's a setting in the background, so if you don't have this, that's why we, were, we changed the setting. But I'll change it back and then you'll have this again. So we know it worked, but we need to bring that around there. Well, go ahead and follow along on my screen here. You could probably find your name on that list, but you can also see that there's rooms 102, 104, 106, anybody that has a patient in it, the room is listed, all the way down to 223. And you'll notice that 220, 222, there's like no 212s, and there's some things missing on here. Well, that's because there's no one admitted to that. There's a footer button that says show empty beds on the right, and when I click that, then it'll show me the rooms that are empty beds on my screen. Probably right now when you click it, do you get anything? You do. Does it show you room number? Mm -hmm. It does. <coughs> okay. So you'll notice that 220 and 222 are not listed in the med search location. Everything else is. That's because those are our, technically our labor beds, and the OB is its own location now. So 220 and 222 are part of the location of OB. So we're going to go back to lists, click on the body button list, click on any location, and find OB. And is there anyone listed there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's an OB patient. When I click the show empty beds, I have 220 and 222 listed. These are the two OB beds. When I go back to lists on the body button, click on any location, and now I'm going to click on nursery. No patients are listed in the nursery. When I click show empty beds and hide empty beds, it doesn't do anything for me. That's because they're not built quite yet. So eventually we're going to have 
I don't know how many beds in there, six, I don't know. We'll see what oh, admissions oh, builds. Heaven in help us if that's over the case. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> they have to have a location to admit the patient, too, so they have to build like six virtual beds, <laughs> even though we do rooms and stuff. <laughs> So we'll see how admissions handles that, but for now they don't have their nursery beds built. So on the list location, on your outline, and the page two, it says number three, staff board body buttons lists. Under the any location, it's starred and it says the nursing floor locations are med search, OB, and nursery. Right now, we function as one location in Healthland on our desktop. Going into Meditech, we now become three locations, those three. So if we want to see all the patients in the hospital, we can only see it one location at a time. Med search, OB, and nursery. If you are the only CNA on the floor and you're assigned to every patient for the day, then what we would do is we would get all three of those locations to default onto your list. So we would add them. And we can do that in the assignments routine. And we're going to learn that today. When you click on My Patients on your lists, you're back to that My List, My Patients routine, which is blank right now. And it's blank because we haven't made any assignments to ourselves yet. But we found ourselves in there. We know we're in there. We just need to add them onto our list. If you click on Lists one more time, the body button, Click on Recently Accessed, and this just kind of shows you all the patients, and this is kind of like, I think the setting is for a week, like all the patients that I've accessed over the last week will come on here, and it's just um, like if I had uh, the find account routine and I had somebody that called in with a rash and, oh, we need to talk to the doctor, or our Benadryl's not working, and it doesn't sound like they need to come into the ER, so you're just going to pull up their medical record and call the doctor. So you go to the find account routine. You pull it up, you say, okay doc, these are their allergies and can you call them back? And so you had accessed that record and so then you close it out, you go about your day back to my list and then they call back about a couple hours later and they said, whatever that doc gave me, it didn't help. And so now you need to find their account again and pull up their record and call the doctor back, right? So on your recently accessed list, the account will be right there. If you don't want to have to go through that whole find account routine, you can just go to recently accessed. Or if you like, you can go right back into find account and pull it up again. Go ahead to my list or go ahead to the list button again. If you're not there already. Click on any location. Click on med search. And your list comes up here. Is everybody on the location med search? Not yet. Okay. We're going to start on page two, number three, letter B of your outline called assignments. <coughs> so we just finished our nursing report. We're starting our day. Charge nurses made the assignments and we're ready to get started. When we log into our Meditech desktop, we clicked on the clinical menu and we clicked on status board. And then it brought us up and we had that blank status board. So we know that we need to add patients to our list for the day. We can go to the any location and see all the patients listed. From here, you can make an assignment to yourself. The day shift, sometimes the word clerk does it for you. I want you to notice these two columns on the left of my status board. And just watch <coughs> over there. And I'm going to click on this assignments button. Can you see what happens? I get these check boxes. But did everybody get that too when you click on assignments? Okay. I want you to find your name. Who am I going to be today? I'm going to be Spike. And then on, on the footer button, do you see the provider list button? Go ahead and click provider list. You can pick the care provider that you want to assign this patient to. And I'm actually going to have you assign it to your neighbor. Okay? Even though it's your name, I'm going to have you assign it to who your neighbor is. 
I'm going to pick on Andrea today. I don't have a neighbor. They're my neighbor. She's very smarty pants. <laughs> that are currently assigned to your neighbor. So there might be one, there might be more than one. The one that you just added would appear in green text. The one that was already on there would be in black text. Mm -hmm. Does anybody remember what the green text means in Meditech? It's information that's not saved yet. So just because we made the assignment, we haven't saved it. So you have to click on the bottom right button for save. Okay? From here, it takes you back to the location med search, right? Now I want you to click on lists. Go to my list. And do you have anybody on there? Is your neighbor on know. there? Nurse Patsy's on now. I have Logan on mine. I don't I think I have any. Nurse Patsy. Well, if you got a list and then my patient, because I don't know. Mine is Nurse Patsy. Yeah, Push refresh. Oh, somebody might not have assigned Janelle. anybody. No, still That's Janelle. That's why. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to tell <laughs> you that. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's nice. I'll handy. assign Logan someone. Okay. okay. I'll assign Logan. We had yeah, to pick on Janelle, but Janelle's actually Carrie. Okay. <laughs> so Carrie's like, how do I have Patsy? <laughs> but we just made an assignment for somebody else, mm -hmm. right? So now that you're in my list, do you have that patient highlight in green? Go ahead and hit the footer button, remove from my list. Now your list should be back to where it was. Hit no, refresh. refresh. You know? okay. Now okay. back to the little box at the top that says list patients in bed, any location like this. She should have yep. And I just removed her, so she. Right back to the lists. And on your list it says my patients, and the patients it says zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how you can make an assignment for somebody else. But we want to get an assignment for ourselves. So what we could have done, we could go to any location, med search, see all the patients in this area of our department. We can find our name again, click on assignments button, the body button. If you currently had somebody assigned to you, then you would have a check mark in the box already. Do you see that? I had already assigned Spike to myself and I have a check in the box automatically. Go ahead and check off your name again. And now I just want you to go to the Add to My List footer button. Nothing really happens when you push it, huh? It doesn't really change anything. Go to Lists, Body button. Click on My page. Or do you see how now you have My Patients and it says One? Click on there. And you should have it on your list. So it really does work, even though it doesn't give you a flag or anything. Go back to lists. Click on any location. Click on med search. Go ahead and click on assignments so you get those check boxes. And do you automatically already have a check in the box for, by your name, by your patient? See how that works? They're already assigned to you, so now you have a check. Now we're going to click on the footer button that says just my list. This takes you in to the routine where you can change your list just for yourself. It kind of looks like that patient assignments by care provider, right? The screen's pretty much identical, except you didn't have to pick the care provider you're already pre-selected when you go to my list, but the screens are pretty much the same there, okay? 
I mean, I have green text. Do you guys have green text on yours? Yep. It's because we decided we were going to make this assignment to ourselves and we didn't save it yet, which is funny because technically it's already assigned to us, right? We'll save it. So now we're going to click on lists. On my patients, we still have one on there, right? So we didn't, we can't assign the patient to ourselves twice. It's already assigned to us. It's on there. <coughs> Once it's on there, it's on there. No matter how many times we go into that routine and say, I'm going to assign this patient to myself again, you know, it's always just going to be there. And every time you do that, the text will turn green and you have to save. It's not going to take it off your list or anything. It's just because it thinks you're in a routine. Go ahead and click on the My Patients or My List for some of you. And you have your name up there. But you don't have any information in these columns, right? It's a blank. There's a footer button on this status board, and this is what we refer to as our status board, our My List status board. And it says Edit My List. Click on that. Doesn't that look familiar? Notice how the text is green now, or excuse me, the text is black now, where it was green before. Is your text still green? Mm -hmm. I'm getting confused looks. Logan says my text is black, but yeah. my highlight is your, highlight. It's highlighted. Right? Text is yeah. mm -hmm. Your text is no different. <laughs> yeah, hers, hers is still. Yours is still green. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It should be black. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's maybe just a button. Can you click on a different side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you just have a white chunk, it's black. It's black. Yeah. Okay. It should be black. If it's not, <coughs> let me know. Some people said okay. So everybody's black, and it's just highlight and green. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from here, there's a lot of different routines we can do to edit your list on the fly. So really, what we've talked about is how to do assignments and how to get people onto your list. When you come in, you have a blank list. You can go in and you can make an assignment for somebody else. And the best way to do that is to go to any location, med search, click on assignments. And you can assign patients to your neighbor. If you come in and it defaults you into the My List, all you have to do, and you don't have to go through all of those clicks, is you just have to click on Edit my list. That's all I want to do. I don't want to make assignments for somebody else. All I want to do is edit my list. So from here, it defaults you into the current tab, and this is who is currently assigned to you. And if you had a patient that you were assigned to yesterday on your shift and you came in today, perhaps they're still assigned to you, perhaps they're not. Maybe the next shift didn't take that assignment off of there. So you might still have them listed on your list. The way to get those patients off of there, if you're not assigned to them today, would be the footer button, Remove All. Go ahead and push Remove All. Gone. I'm going to hit Save. Now we're at square one again. Nobody on our list, right? So, we have finished report. We have our assignments from our charge nurse. We don't, we're going to let our neighbor take care of their own list. We're not going to make assignments for them. We're just going to get our patients on our list, right? So just go to edit my list, and let's say that the night shift and day shift switch, the nurse caring for the patient have the same assignments as the nurse coming on and going off. So there's not a lot of change there. We have the exact same three patients. We're going to go copy from provider. So I can get all of the patients who are on find the nurse, you know, on Val Bragg's list. She has all these patients on there. And she's actually assigned herself <coughs> some beds even. We'll talk about how she did that. I can pick which ones I want to assign to myself. And I can click save. And now those have become my patients. Okay? It's a pretty fast way to do things. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to come in and I'm going to remove them all again. So my list is blank. The other way that you can add patients to your list is the next button, edit my list, and go to add patient. Did everybody clear their list and now they're on add patient? Okay. 
click on it, it kind of looks familiar. It's kind of like that find account routine. If you know the patient's initials, all you got to do is type in N, comma, no space, your first initial. Use the search footer button by clicking on it. Select and push add. And they should pop up up here. Does that happen for you? Then push save. And there they are on your list, right? Okay. Go back to the footer button, edit my list. Some other routines in here that we won't use very often, but I wanted to explain to you what these buttons are. You can add beds. So I'm going to say that I am covering for the med search location. I will be assigned to these beds today, no matter what, whether there's patients in them or not. Those are my, that's my assignment today. We don't really do assignments that way. If my patient in 200, Amy Wilbur, moves to room 102, I move with her, right? I'm still her nurse. But if I've only assigned myself to a bed and Amy moves, she's going to drop off my list because she's no longer in my assigned bed. If I didn't assign the patient and only the bed, then my list could change on me. So we really won't use that very often at all. I'm going to take the check marks out of there. The next button you see is cover for. And you probably don't have anybody listed on your cover for, like I do, right? <laughs> Audrey's looking around like, something's coming. It's oh, <laughs> not good. The exercise the dance party, party upstairs. Hopefully they don't stump their feet too hard. I'm going to go ahead and take this. <laughs> So you have something that looks like this, right? Okay. You can cover for your neighbor. So go ahead and pick your neighbor's name. And Patsy, I'm going to have you pick Logan. Logan, okay. pick Patsy. And I'm going to pick Sandy Breyer because her birthday was yesterday. And then I have to hit save. So now any patient that was assigned to Sandy is now up on my list because I'm going to cover for her while she goes to break. So I know if they have meds due while she's gone, I know what care items they have coming up, and that kind of thing. So I can't cover for Patsy because she's <laughs> covering for me. <laughs> oh, did, ever, did anybody else have a problem like that? You can't cover for your neighbor? Well, you covered for Janelle. So. You covered for Carrie. Did you pick Carrie's name? Yeah, but she was assigned to me or whatever, so we have the same patient, yeah. technically. To say patient. But it both says Kate, Martha, Nurse Kate. Yeah. Nurse Kate. But that's because she's not. You assigned on. Yes. Yeah. But the did you? Says, well, they're in the third line. Did that's you? That's because I assigned you earlier or whatever. Oh, so yeah. your name came up. <laughs> but nobody else really got the message like Logan and Patsy did. You can't cover for each other. Like, look, she tried to say that she was covering for Logan, and Logan tried to say she was covering for Patsy. No. And it's like, you can't cover for her, she's covering for you. Yeah. It's kind of like, how does that Smart. Smart. Right? You got an you error both message. can't leave. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a hard stop. Go on back to edit my list. Click on cover for. Whoever you were covering for, you can set it to active no. And when you save it, those patients fall off of your list now. So I was only covering for 30 minutes. I didn't have to add them one by one. I could just click cover for their patients come to my list. I'm not covering anymore. They fall off. We don't really do that now, but it's just a convenience that you have. Because the other way that you can view their patients or the other way that you can chart on a patient throughout the hospital would be to go to the any location med search. And you can see the care items there if I didn't mess with your stats. So any location, med search, and you would have all of this stuff, and you will. I'm going to fix it for you on a break, but you would have all of this stuff, and you could see every patient on here. So even though I'm not assigned to Nurse Kathy B, I can come in and I can say, oh, I dumped that sandy pan, I'm going to go in and chart it from here. No problem. I can do that from the location med search without ever having to add her to my list, right? 
So this shows my patients. It's like that little piece of paper I love to carry in my pocket that actually is about 10 pieces. I put all my meds, I put all my times on there. I love to have that paper in my pocket. It's like my security blanket. I can look, I can make sure I'm not missing something. Check it 10 times, you know. Make my list, checking it twice. This is like the my list that's on my computer screen. We have like 11 patients indirectly assigned to us. How do you remove those off? Oh, let's go to, I'm in edit my list edit my and list. current. And when you highlight the can be directly and indirectly oh, assigned. And say remove all. Or you can hit remove yeah. all. It's sure. not, it's grayed out. The indirect assignment won't let you. Yeah, the no. remove all is grayed out. Remove and remove all are grayed out. And you don't have anybody directly assigned? Only no. indirectly? Only indirectly. Did you assign yourself to anybody? Under my list, it says yeah. 11. And you didn't start. This wasn't your list. No, but did you, with. did you change the active to non-active on who you're covering for? Because then it should take it off. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm wondering, did somebody what assign a bunch of patients to cover for? Hmm. It's yeah, Diane active. Bennett. She's got a lot of patients on her list. Good job, Katie. I got mine off. Look at there. I'm learning yes, something. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Did it go? Yep. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. You have any idea? They, they don't have I anybody just directly assigned. No. Okay. Um, theirs was I can grayed out. Oh, so and well. everybody else does have okay. one on patient with their name. All right. Oh, okay. Go here. I took mine off, but I can put her back on. All right. Let's put them back. We'll put them back on. I know it. That was scary. <laughs> when you're done hitting your list with your just you your patient on there. Oh. <laughs> That's a busy what? nurse. <laughs> but it will let both of us be on be Kate's nurse. That's interesting. Yeah. It won't yeah. let you switch out for each other, but it'll it'll assign more than one person. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's like if you know you have a nurse and an aide, mm -hmm. it'll let you assign. So. Yeah. Is everybody back on this screen, or are you back on your my list status board? My list. Okay. Or on your status board? Okay. We'll go into status board. So you see all the people that are assigned to the patient are listed in the list column. Can everybody see that column on your screen? If not, there might be a scroll bar for you to move over. Okay. Who all is assigned to your patient? A lot of people are assigned Ours to are the same. So every time somebody makes an assignment to somebody else or signs themselves up for the patient, it gets yeah, listed in this column. And it's kind of overkill because then the ward clerk takes a call or somebody takes a call and they're like, well, let me see who their nurse is. Oh, man. Look at all of these people. Who do I even start with? Right? So you just want to really make the assignments. We played around with these a lot in test, but in the real world you're just going to make the assignment appropriate to who is actually assigned. And then you need to unassign whoever the previous nurse was. Okay? So you would go to the assignments and you would click on the patient maybe, or you could click on provider list, and you don't have to check off a patient. And then when you pick so you say, oh, that night nurse Diane Bennett, she's hogging all my patients. <laughs> you can go in to her list, and you can remove people from her list, or you can remove all and save it. Mm -hmm. And she is no longer assigned to all of those people. So when Diane comes in, she's going to be cussing me. She's I don't have those people on my list. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear an apology for me, I might so get an email about it. <laughs> So if you have somebody that's assigned to your patient right now, find them in the care provider and take them off so that you're the only one that's assigned. Check a patient to go to a provider. Only if you want to assign a patient to a provider. <laughs> I'm a 
years. Now you gotta remember everybody who's on the yeah. list. Yeah. If it's yeah. a long yeah. list. What did it do to exactly you? Sign. I think that's where it is. Yeah, because now you want to remove. Whose list are you on? Everybody yeah. but. I clicked Sue's. I don't know that I really. I'm not sure I'm where I want to be. Go ahead and get Gina. So we want to take. Now, take me off of it. Sure. There's a whole bunch. Okay. You have, to go one by you have to go one at a time, though. So go back to uh, okay. provider list sure. and type my name in there. Select me. So you can either search for me. Okay, next time. Okay, I'm already off of there. Click save. Go back to your list. Did you take Carrie off? No. Okay. So let's, um, we, need a, we need a patient. So go to edit my list and add a patient. And it just has a few So just yeah, kind of turn here. No, and <laughs> more a night shift you kind of all just know I mean not too often does somebody go into health land and make that assignment some people do some people don't usually it's just there still from day shift and you just kind of ignore it but this is a way that you could clean that up if you wanted to and usually you're not going to have 10 people assigned to the same patient okay so now I'm going to edit my no, remove them. No, there we go. Go ahead and get that. Okay. 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 There you go. Yeah, I'm going to use the list. Molly used to be really good at some of the patients. I'm going to make sure that the patients are going to be there. I'm going to be in the wall. Let's see. Well, why is your person keep falling off? Because you're removing. She selected one person. Well, okay, let's look at that. And you watch the other video camera. That's not coming to any of mine, right? Just one. <laughs> you get that one. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm not photogenic. <laughs> not Anything like for you. I know. I hate having my picture taken. But you all look good. You always look like Not my and Smith might have funniest time videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, um, you, you went over, yeah. And then actually, no. Going. No. The oh. last time I took it down. <laughs> no. It's still not <laughs>
just do one more. Just pick like carry John. Take carry John off of me. And then just type in Everybody's kind of seen how you can add an assignment to somebody else. You can take an assignment away from somebody else, and you can add an assignment to yourself, right? From the status board on the My List, everybody's here now, right? So when I click on Assignments, I get the checkbox. When I click back on Status Board, it gets rid of the checkbox. Everybody sees that, right? Back and forth. That's how you can get rid of that assignments box. <clears throat> We're going to go back into the assignments. And in this screen, we're going to click on the My List. We talked about all of these buttons at the top, how you can copy from somebody else, how you can just add one patient at a time. We don't really do beds, right? We don't really cover for each other now, but it's convenient if you want to do that. Everybody's on here? There you go. Okay. So we talked about who's currently on your list that you can copy from somebody else. You can just add a patient by searching for them. We talked about how to add beds, but we don't really do our assignments by beds now. However, if you're the only CNA on the floor, or if you're the charge nurse and you want every patient on your list, then you could just go into the location. You could select all the beds, and there's a master check, so you don't have to do them all at one at a time. You just click on that master check at the top, and you save it, and then all of those beds are yours. And if you're the only CNA or if you're the charge nurse, that makes sense, right? But if you're another nurse with only certain patients, it doesn't make sense to do that. And you would need to do that for med surge location. And what are the other two locations for a nursing floor now? OB and nursery. OB and nursery, exactly. We learned that you can cover for somebody. That we can, the next button we didn't talk about, you can assign teams, care teams. Like if we were working at Madonna, they have um, like a pod of patients and then they have a care team that takes care of them on some floors. And it might be like the occupational therapist, a PT, an ST, a nurse. Um, usually the physician doesn't join the team, just the same physician all the time. And the team kind of adjusts to the physician. But then we can take that team A to this patient, that kind of thing. We don't really use that here, so we'll never use it. Tasks, this would be something like a task for a location of med surge. Who's going to check the crash cart? So we're going to assign this person to check the crash cart for the day. Well, it all sounds fine and dandy, but then when the person does go check the crash cart and they sign off and we still use the paper system that we have now, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Meditech doesn't realize, I mean, you sign off that you did it, but Meditech doesn't save that information anywhere. So it's really pointless to assign a task when you can't even follow up to see if it was done or not, even though somebody signed off on it. So we're never going to use that. So teams and tasks, not going to use it. I'm going to cancel out of here, and I'm back on my list, but I'm still in assignments, and I know I am because I have that checkbox. This checkbox, if I had multiple people on here, it's also a master check that when I click on it, it checks everybody. Okay? I'm just going to click on status for Is everybody back to the screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, yes? I'll see you then. That's a no. <laughs> That's Morse code for no. Just cancel. Okay. Without having to click around, I'm just going to show you something real quick.
real quick about this assignments routine. <laughs> that when I'm in there, I have a footer button for history, and I can see where I was clicking, who I made assignments to, and who made assignments to me. If you ever wanted to know what the audit trail was, kind of TMI, right? Just a little more information than we might need, but it is there. It does keep track. Where was that history? It's oh, in right. That. Okay. It's yep. It's actually in the my list routine, and it, okay. so it shows history, and that, that's in the assignments screen. When you're on the status board, without it being in the assignments mode, when you click on edit my list, you also have the history. And I just wanted to show you that this is the status board, not in the assignments routine, plain status board. When I click on edit my list, this screen is identical to the assignments routine my list screen, right? So you don't even have to click on assignments to get to that. You can just be in your status board and you can click edit my list. So we've talked about how to add a patient to your list without having to go into the assignments routine. We've talked about the assignments routine, adding people to your list, taking people off of other people's lists, and seeing who done what, where, and when, right? The history tab. That pretty much covers all of page two of your outline. That brings us to page three. And we will start with clinical data next, but we're going to take a little break first, okay? There's some refreshments, bottles of water and snacks out there. Stretch your legs, take the opportunity for a bathroom break. And relax, let me see if I can figure out this pause button for all of you viewers at home. I couldn't said I could just stop it and restart it. Yeah. If we didn't want to continue. Yeah. yeah. 